You're watching 20 Questions today. My name is Gail Upton, and today we're talking with Jody Foster Babcock, a local resident and president of the Foster Foundation. Thanks so much for coming today, Judy. Thanks. I'm glad to be here, Gail. Fosters were the first Europeans to settle in what became River Falls, Wisconsin. Could you tell us the story for people that are unfamiliar with it? Certainly, I'd be happy to do that. So back in 1848, when Wisconsin became a state, my great-great-grandfather, so five generations back, um, was looking for a place to settle. And as, as a youth, the, his family had moved into the Illinois area, but he really didn't like the climate there. He tended to be sickly. He was not real happy with it. And so as about a 16, 17-year-old boy, he joined the Mexican War and found that he really liked the South. And so he was thinking he would move to Texas or New, New Mexico or something like that. But in talking with a cousin, Eli Lewis, who had been north of Illinois into Wisconsin, Eli convinced him that perhaps he at least ought to try the northern climate. And so Joel decided that he would take a riverboat from Illinois, that Chicago, you know, that, that part of the river in St. Louis, and head north. And he came up to Stillwater, or to, sorry, Fort Snelling, and took a stop there overnight and talked to some of the local folks and didn't really find anything there that really suited him. So he went back to the riverboat and talked to the captain and hopped another ride and went two days up to Stillwater, you know, overnight. And, and over there, he met some local folks and stayed for a bit and kind of checked out the area. And they said, oh, the best hunting and fishing, if that's what you're looking for, you should you know, go across the river to the Hudson area. And so he, through family and friends, had known a couple gentlemen named the Nobles Brothers who'd f settled just at the mouth of the willow. So he went across and got in contact with them. And they showed him some different areas and introduced him some, to some folks and through a series of you know, overnight camping trips, if you will. He, he checked out the Willow River and the Rush River and ultimately found his way through a connection with some local trappers and hunters to the mouth of the, uh, the Kinney as it joined the St. Croix and he hiked up that valley and in the canyon and finally came to the confluence of the South Fork and the Kinney Connect itself and saw those beautiful Cascade Falls and said, this is the place for me. And so our family's been on the banks of the river right there at the confluence of those two rivers near Glen Park ever since. Oh, that's, that's amazing. So here, there have been fosters in River Falls for all those generations, including you and your father, Bruce. Mm -hmm. um, could you talk a little bit more about the more recent fosters, and especially your dad? Sure, sure, I'd be happy to do that. So um, after Joel got married at a little bit older age, he tend, there tended to be that gap. You know, he married a young woman who was quite a bit younger than him. And he had a, a son named AP, and AP Foster had a son named Earl, which was my grandfather who was a, a local mail carrier many years and an engineer at the, the hydroelectric plant, as long as I knew him, you know, after I was born in 62. And his youngest son was Bruce, and he was born at the, at the property uh, right across from the power plant. And uh, that was the family homestead where Earl and Letha lived and raised their family. And I remember it as a place where, you know, as I got into the family at 62 and beyond that we always had family gatherings and so on but my dad was a, a hunter and a fisher and he followed in those footsteps from Earl to AP you know and back to Joel and, and they loved to hunt and they loved to fish my dad was a boy scout all his life and if you um, ever saw the Indiana Jones movie where River Phoenix in the beginning is is going into the cave and kind of checking things out I imagine that was kind of how my dad was as a kid always exploring always investigating always getting into trouble I don't know if he ever got into a box of snakes or not but <laughs> <laughs> he certainly told stories about boxes of angleworms <laughs> so and, and he was a character of River Falls most of his life and you know traveled around North Dakota and, and so on but always came back to his roots in River Falls and you know he was a well-known historian and told many of these same stories himself so it's kind of fun to follow in his footsteps. And I imagine when he was a boy that part of their land was country. It wasn't, Correct. It wasn't city and now it's in the city it's, limits isn't it? Yeah I, I think the O.S. Powell brothers when they incorporated River Falls actually included that lot in some of the early incorporations and then um, Joel acquired you know, the rights to the lot through that incorporation process. So he actually had s claim staked it and then became part of the city and had to reclaim it and so on. So we have those deeds in the, in the abstract. It's kind of fun to read those old abstracts. You have to infer some things sometimes in terms of what happened to whom, but um, you know, it's interesting. So. Okay. Now the, the current fosters have developed a new plan for the foster land. Could you tell us how that came about? Sure. So um, as I talked about, my dad lived on that property all his life. And at, at one point when my grandparents were getting on in years, they wanted to be sure to preserve the legacy of that property as a family holding. And so they talked to their children and decided to form a closely held family corporation with Bruce, Letha, 
Earl, his brother, Bruce's brother Jim, and his sister Joan. And so they did that, and then through the generations, each of the children, in my cousins, um, inherited shares through their parents. And over the years, my cousins decided they didn't really want to be shareholders. So that was a way to keep the property and still pass on the value. We purchased out their interest over time. And um, at the end, it was just my father and I and my brother who owned active shares in the corporation. He died in 2007. Um, a Boy Scout till the end, bless his little heart. <laughs> um, he was helping someone in a snowstorm and ended up having a heart attack. Oh, but, uh, you know, that's the way he wanted to go. But um, we had talked about in his later years what, what to do with the property. It had, um, through my grandparents, become a mobile home park with, you know, affordable housing. And many people that I meet in town still tell stories about the years that they lived there, you know, in, as a student or as a young parent or as a young person. And uh, you know, I worked with that business for many years as well. And it, it wasn't really a money-making venture in most cases. It was really a, for a social purpose, just to make sure people had a place to stay and a place to be. And it was so convenient to downtown. It was always an active space. So we talked about continuing the concept of housing and, and also talked about some other ideas. And when he passed away, um, I purchased out my brother's interest after negotiating with him and because he didn't want to be a property owner. And uh, at least not for that. And, as I talked to friends, we decided that the idea would be to create uh, a community purpose space. That was the original concept. And there were a lot of different ideas, maybe a community garden space or a, a park space. But a lot of need that I heard was really a place for winter activity, so that a building would kind of need to be built. And it ultimately, it, it became you know a place where people and purpose can connect. That's kind of our vision. So we're hoping to build a community and nonprofit activity center there. Um, so it's not really about the building, but what happens there. So that's the vision that has come together. So that's what we're pursuing with this new corporation. Well, so that's a lovely idea. You wanted a, a way to combine serving a community need and honoring your family in, yeah. in the River Falls history. So, so you've set up this foster foundation. What exactly is it and what do you hope to accomplish? Yeah. So um, as I mentioned, our, our family holds a closely held corporation. Now I'm the sole shareholder of that. And that uh, legal structure really doesn't lend itself to perpetuating um, a nonprofit center, if you will, or a community space, um, having the advantage of being tax deductible if someone would donate money to it or you know, other gifts or whatever. And so we looked at um, joining up with other organizations that might have a similar mission. We looked at some public options. And in the end, we decided to, to follow the opportunity to create a, a a nonprofit corporation, a 501c3, with the mission of um, really bringing people and purpose together. And our chief project now, as I described, is to create this community centered space and build capacity in our nonprofits in the River Falls area and the region and beyond, and just create something that's going to last, sustaining itself uh, in a really cool way. So, the Foster Community Foundation is the kind of parent entity. And then the logos and things that you see are really around the gathering place, which was what we've named the project. If the building ultimately gets called that, I'll be surprised. But the concept of it is that, you know, and that harkens back to when my grandmother, you know, would, was great for planning family picnics and parties and birthday celebrations. There was always something going on at that property between the people that live there in the mobile homes and their celebrations and their activities and their family and my family was never a dull moment on that property. And that's what we want to re-energize there with the new spaces. Mm -hmm. Lots of people coming and going, lots of activities happening, and, and just a gift to the community that will keep giving, but not burden the public structure. So we didn't want to gift the land to the city and have them be obligated to manage and create the space. That wasn't the concept. That's why it's a, nine, a 501c3. Mm -hmm. So who all is involved with the foundation currently? So we, we've attracted a, a very diverse board of directors from the community, and we're always looking for help in terms of volunteers and or board members. As you can imagine, with a startup like this, the board is working. You know, they're all working. So myself, I'm, I'm serving as president currently and hoping to pass that office on to a, an able-bodied set of hands soon. Um, we've got some people in the wings for that. My husband is also serving. His background is in the computer technology area, so he's helping with the website and some media, and he also serves as secretary, so he's a very good note taker. <laughs> and then we've attracted uh, Julie Okel from, uh, she's currently employed at the 3M Corporation, but her background is, uh, includes a master's in nonprofit management, so really appreciate her community connections through 3M, her own personal energy for that, and then her trained practice as a professional. She helps us kind of keep an eye out for the appropriate legal 
things and, and to stay connected to the, the community. Um, beyond that, then um, Jennifer O'Neill from O'Neill Elder Law uh, Office in Hudson. She's a longtime River Falls resident. She was Jenny Richardson when she was young. Um, she's involved in our board, helping advise us on legal matters and assisting with some of the finance activities. Um, we have Missy Crayford, Melissa Crayford. She works at Greenskeepers. Um, Earl and Jana Carl are on our board. And then we've attracted an actuary, believe it or not, for the finance side from Hudson. His name is John Jansen. And so that's our current board makeup. We have many, many volunteers. And we've had a couple interns even in our early years to help us do some of the work. So um, it's just great to see people engage with this project and support it. Everyone says it's just what River Falls needs. Now we just need to keep it moving. Okay, so uh, and a large part of the foundation's goal is to create this gathering place. Why don't you talk about that project and what, what's going to be there? Certainly. So uh, initially our concept was to bring organizations together and create a space where the community could have birthday parties and celebrations and activities and events. And so we thought that was the need. So in our early years, in 2010, we did a lot of community service surveys, talked to people, talked to groups, and we also did, through an internship, a space survey of all the available spaces in River Falls, because we wanted to test our concept that this was really needed. So to create a building and then have it not have it used wouldn't be a good outcome, right? So we talked a lot to the library folks and Wendy over there, and they are oversubscribed. They have, you know, 800 pennies a year or something, you know, and they're a public space, so they have some constraints on what can happen there. And so we really wanted to build a facility that would complement not only our public spaces like the library, but also the private spaces like the restaurants and the golf courses who also support events and activities, and, and some of the spaces that are leased out to nonprofits today. And that was the other theme that came through as we talked to community members and their individual interest in this project. They also, as you know, Overfall is a very active community, um, represented board interests and other nonprofits and said, well, if you built a facility like that, I think I could see a way where my organization or the people that I work with on my passion could use it. And so those conversations evolved and we created in uh, 2011, I have to think back now, um, a, a forum at the library um, where we brought some nonprofit organizations together and invited them to um, express their intent in writing, so a letter of intent saying, if, if we worked on this together, would you like to partner with us? And we've gotten four organizations to commit in writing to do that. So we have the River Falls Community Theater Organization. They were um, kind of one of the first ones to the table. Um, River Falls Community Arts Base, you know, our Art on the Kinney promoters and our Music in the Park promoters, so plenty of activity driven from both those organizations. Our seniors, blessedly, came forward and said, we appreciate the space we have today with Wellhaven. We miss our space at Ingram Center. So if we could have a space, that would be wonderful for us, and we would like to see that happen. And then recently, there's a group that started to pursue forming a teen center type facility, and they've approached us as well. And so we have those four organizations um, partnering with us, like we say. We've asked them what they'd like to be called, stakeholders, partners. And, and that seems to be the word that resonates, where they're helping create what the building is going to do and be and provide. It sounds like it could be a huge building. What, what are we talking about, about in terms of size? Um, based on the um, City of River Falls dimensions and design uh, setbacks, needing to be back from the river, we don't want to impair that space, um, and so on, we can fit, according to our architect, about a 19,000 square foot building, a two-story oh building. Wow. So. Um, about the size of City Hall, roughly, mm -hmm. a little different configuration, certainly, but you know, about that size. Um, so I think City Hall's a little larger than that, but that concept of a building with a couple of stories um, and different kinds of spaces available to each other so that you can have a real synergy across organizations, across activities, and, and really foster that interaction, as well as bring people and purpose together. That sounds wonderful. Um, so you. With community theater, you'd have a stage in there, possibly? Yes, um, we're um, looking out the layout, but we've proposed to them that they consider a black box or flexible kind of space so that in the seasons when they're not running a production, we could use it for other kinds of meetings, perhaps run movie night, you know, just another option, um, some video simulcasts, perhaps, if somebody had an event like that that they wanted to have. So just another space to bring people together and, and make sure it was flexible enough. Um, but they certainly are looking and have expressed very strongly an interest to have a permanent home 
Um, they are using a variety of spaces around town and that's wonderful, but it tends to make them have to build sets in one place, rehearse in another place, and then a few days or the day of the performance, pack it all up, put it in a box or a truck and drive it and set it up and try to run their production and then quickly break it down because they're competing for others in those spaces and, and there's a lot of usage and so they're looking to, to settle. Um, and that's, mm -hmm. that's exciting for them to contemplate and we enjoy talking about the options with them. That sounds wonderful. So do you see the project as a River Falls version of the Phipps Center? Um, you know, that's an interesting comparison and we've certainly toured the Phipps along with other facilities to help frame in our mind what we think the facility will be like. There will be aspects of the arts organizations that the FIPS represents, but again, having that sort of intergenerational mix of youth with the teen center potentially and, and the seniors, as well as family-focused activities and the opportunity for groups to just use the space on an interim basis. You know, if somebody wants to have a, a larger meeting or a, a conversation or a business would like to have some training and they don't have a training facility in their own building. These are, you know, again, opportunities to complement the other spaces in River Falls and provide another place to do things. There's also beautiful outdoor space there. I mean, yeah, that's, that building size sounds large and we'll have to have appropriate parking, but there's still almost an acre of, of water front, a walking path that's been installed now, the multimodal path that you know complements the, the white pathway. So it's not just the indoor space that can be used, it would also be the mix of outdoor, the complement of the river and the proximity to Glen Park. You know, so you think of some of the races and runs and walks, all of those things could generate and start in that space as well or end in that space with the celebration. Right. So we're excited about the opportunities. And Art on the Kinney could just make a little it curve just get and a little keep longer. going. That's yes. right. or, okay. or have some different activities that they might not have been able to fit in. They have such mm -hmm. a wonderful selection of artists with that juried art fair and they want to keep it intimate, mm -hmm. as they say, and, and kind of limited in terms of the number of artists so that there's good exposure. And we respect that. That's a, a signature event for them. So we, you know, we talk about maybe more music or more food or other kinds of um, performance art, if you will. You know, bigger installations. They've done some fun things along the path. Um, just give them another opportunity. Okay. So what uh, do you have a timeline for development of the project, um, construction, project completion? Sure. If, if yeah. money wasn't a barrier. <laughs> I would already have a shovel in the ground. <laughs> That's <laughs> kind of where my heart is at. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly our board is anxious to move forward. And um, we've, we've set some ag aggressive goals and see that in working through learning about the process of capital campaigning and building facilities that it's going to take us a little longer in this economy than we would like, but we're on a good path. And um, if, w if and when we can keep moving through these phases as we planned, um, the good news is that we would, you know, within the next few years be breaking ground and opening facilities. So if, if all went as we currently planned, it would be looking at something in the 2015 time frame, which is you know still out there, but not so far out there. Okay. Um, I know our seniors are anxious as well. They're like, we want to see it built and be able to use it. So <laughs> you know, they keep, keep us on our toes. Okay. So you've mentioned uh, some groups are looking forward to take part. Uh, are you still looking for groups and individuals to help as well? Um, we're always looking for assistance and partnerships, whether the organization just wants to provide advice and services, you know, if someone's got that sort of business background and interested in getting engaged in the project because of what it represents for River Falls and the surrounding region. Um, we are uh, trying to manage our spaces so that we have a good mix of things, but we're, you know, continuing to talk to nonprofit organizations who might want to rent space either on a permanent basis or even, uh, uh, we call it hoteling, sort of. I don't have to have an office every day. I don't have to have a meeting room every day, but once a month I need to bring my board together and I need a place to store my records and it'd be nice for my president or secretary or volunteer coordinator to have a regular place to bring people together because we were otherwise we're virtual or we're out of somebody's house. And so that sort of ongoing fluid use of the space is something we also envision, that hoteling sort of concept because that's one of the things we heard nonprofits lack is a a central storage location for records, information, and a place to gather. So, mm -hmm. or with the community theater, props yeah. and props and sets <laughs> for sure. Yeah, they they certainly made clear what their storage space needs are, and that's great. We, we're happy to accommodate that. Okay. So, do um, city, township, and county government entities have a place in this too, uh, or have a role in the in the whole project? Uh, you know, it's really a, a tri trifold or fourfold effort, right? So there's the business community, the nonprofit community, 
um, individuals, and then of course our city government and local government, as well as our state and our federal government have opportunities to help with this project. It's our job to find those resources, but um, the city administrator here, the, the mayors, um, you know, all of those folks have been very supportive of the project. They believe it's a great investment in River Falls and what you know can be available in this community to attract business and people to live here and students to stay here, you know, and that kind of thing. So um, they've been very supportive and uh, quite frankly, if it hadn't been for the city administrator pointing out the recent WIDA grant opportunity, we wouldn't have the money to tear down the house. So we were very thankful that Scott said, jump on this and we'll help you, but you have to make the application in your own name, which we're certainly happy to do. So they, they've been help, helping us identify opportunity, which is really what we need. And of course, they will oversee the project from a building standards and you know setbacks and all those things I talked about, and we're happy to comply with that. River Falls is a very um, forward-thinking and green-invested community. They're quite a bit ahead of many other communities in Wisconsin and even in the Midwest. So it's, it's great to be in such a, an energy-conscious community, and, and our, our facility is intended to be as we've envisioned it, quite a ways up the green scale. And we like the contrast between the 100-year-old hydroelectric plant, which is obviously a very green type of activity, and the LEED certified solar panels and green roof facility we're envisioning. So we're excited to see that next evolution and partner with the city in that process. It sounds wonderful. really good. OK, so, so how are you planning to finance the project in the future, and will there be fees for use, or uh, are you, you've applied for some grants, mm -hmm. but how do you see it working now and in the future? Sure. Um, you know, questions we wrestle with and have wrestled with all along. So the, the organization that we've gotten hooked up with nationally, the Nonprofit Centers Network, has over 250 of these facilities in their network in Canada and the U.S. And so we're really leveraging that learning as, our, as a member of that organization and consulting with them strongly. And they recommend um, a diversified funding model both for the capital campaign and then for operations. So to give you a more technical answer to your question, um, we would envision that certainly individual donors in the community can make a difference. Um, I think we calculated based on our 15,000 population of River Falls that if everybody gave about $400 over a period of time, the facility would be financed and built. Um, it might take a little more, a little less, but in general on the budget we set up just to build the building and, and you know get it furnished. That would solve it. Now we don't expect every single person in River Falls to give that. That wouldn't be realistic, right? But each, even if a family came forward and gave some gift, it would get us on that pathway. And so that's what we're really trying to encourage now. And in addition to that, we've begun to build relationships with non nonprofit funding organizations. So if you think of the Kresge Foundation and the Anderson Corporation's entities and, and McKnight Foundation and organizations like that, they are certainly interested in these kinds of projects, the Bremer Foundation and so on. And as we build our community support and show our viability, they'll be willing to invest. So you know those dialogues are ongoing, and we're hoping that they will help provide substantial funding to the capital campaign. Um, in addition to that, we you know, will run events and raise money that way and any other way we can think of. So there's some other ideas we have around social enterprise and partnering with organizations for branded items and so on that are being discussed. So that gets us the building, um, furnishing, and hopefully an operating reserve to ramp up and get started with our partners. Um, over time, we intend for the building to pay its own costs through the operating fees and lease payments, rent payments of the tenants. And, and those organizations and the partners we've talked about are going to have to need to plan for their budget. So they're, of course, working very close with us on the costing and the budget and the operating structure. Um, if you think about it a little bit as a cooperative housing kind of option, um, everybody's got to pitch in and, and we've got to figure out how we're going to live and work together. So those dialogues are ongoing as well. Um, we certainly could run events during that time that we're operating and we will continue to write and work on grants and, and gifts toward programming at that point. Um, at this, you know, this stage of the game, our program is the building project. So um, that's what we keep telling funders, and they, they understand that um, and are working with us. So it's really important to identify funders who are interested in capital campaigns and long-term investments and now, but also to cultivate those that will invest in the programming and help support the theater and help support the seniors and help support the youth and whatever else comes. We don't even know for sure what's going to come next. So that's the fun part, is it's always evolving. You never know what's what's going to be on the other end of the phone. That's when it right. Rings, huh? That's right. Okay. It's fun. So once the building is finished, will the Foster Foundation kind of fade out of existence or do you plan to 
keep involvement in this in the long term to yeah. run the program? That's a good question. Our, our vision currently for the Foster Community Foundation, and, and we heard that the name foundation can be a little distracting because people think that's a giving and granting organization typically. Mm -hmm. um, the name of it is a bit of a play on words on our family name, obviously fostering community. Um, so we really hope that it will live on and our endowment when David and I pass away will invest in that entity to help it feed programs. Um, we've talked to our partners about any funding that the foundation has beyond operating the building costs would be prepared and put into funding into their programs as well as other things incubating new entities. I mean there's again things we have an envision that it could start and you know we've been fortunate to be part of some initial startup activities in the River Falls area such as the grow to share concept for the gardening and um, talking to other organizations that want to get started in things and River Falls has been wonderful starting our neighbor's place and you know there's just that energy going on in the community and so we want to keep supporting that growth. That's our vision for the long term. So operate the building, you know, be the umbrella entity, if you will, but each tenant who lives there is still separate, but a partner in the process. Okay. So what's the next step for you? Is it you, you uh, sent out emails on a project called Bring Down the House. We Can did, and that's that? our immediate next milestone. So the, the family household that's there, the, the house at Fo on Winter Street, the foster house, is more than 100 years old. It, it, it's got a, its own story, probably another day's 20 questions conversation. Um, but it, it is beyond its useful life, um, and we're sad to see it go, but we're happy to see it being recycled. So we've been working with the, the River Falls Fire Department on a, a practice session there. We've talked to the Pierce County Historical Society. They've got some materials identified out of the house that they'd like to take, so the house will live on. And um, you know we'll, we'll take down the house and create, for the short term, you know, uh, site parking, I think, is what we're probably going to do, make it a place for people, a level spot where people can park their cars, um, and access the river trail and the other building that we have on there. We moved the Ames Carriage House, we're calling it the Pavilion, onto the property in 2011, and so that space is available for events and activities already. So there's, there's a one space that's on the property that's available for use already. So, okay. yep, so we hope to tear the house down bring down the house by um, the end of the year, you know, close to Thanksgiving, probably when it's finished up. Um, and we've gotten a grant from the Wisconsin Housing and Economic Development Corporation, WIDA, um, through, as I talked about that application process. The catch with that is that they've said to us, you know, tear down the house, pay the bills, send us the reimbursement request. So we're raising money kind of on a matching basis, if you think of it that way, for the funds that they give us. So if you invest today in that Tear Down the House project, the email you talked about and the opportunity to give online, um, when we get reimbursed from WIDA, we'll be able to roll that funding through the process and on to the next project, which will be working towards the design of the facility and other fundraising in the capital campaign and fully documenting the feasibility and operating design of this facility, which is one of the next steps and then planning that you know, full push to, to get the dollars together and get ready to break ground. So it's, um, it's all rolling forward. It's just that constant process of working the dollars to make the most of them. Okay, so how can groups and individuals become involved with this? Well, the easiest way if they want to um, give, which is kind of our first ask, uh, is to go on our website, www.foster-foundation.org, and there is information there on how to give online. Uh, you can certainly send dollars to our post office box. Uh, otherwise, you can contact me or my husband or through the Facebook page that we have and uh, find out more about opportunities to volunteer. If, if dollars aren't in your future, service might be a better option. That's always welcome and a great way to get involved as well. And just to talk about this project as, as what it brings to River Falls. I mean, telling your neighbors, telling your friends. You never know who you tell, what seed that's going to plant, what's going to come as fruit. So. Um, the easiest thing people can do to volunteer every day is just talk about the project and tell their friends and family about it and, and invite them to, to look at it, go over and walk the site. The, the place is open. I know the, the, the police department has said you, know, you might invite some challenges by doing that, but we think the more people go there and see it and experience the peace of that site and the wildlife that's there, and you know, we'll change it by what we're going to build, but I think we'll make it better. And so I, the more people can do that, the, the more they'll understand what a great opportunity it is. So what is the foundation's vision for the, the gathering place and wh what it will be to the community in future years? Yeah, well, I, I think I've described it's really, mm -hmm. from my personal perspective, of course, a, a legacy from my family to keep that space as a community-focused space. 
for the community, I think it's whatever they can create with it, having the opportunity to have a, a beautiful, energy efficient gem like that on the river, as our architect says, it's a gem. It's gonna be a gem on the river. It's just really exciting to, to have that there instead of a rundown old trailer court and a rundown old house that's not really best using the riverfront. And, and that fits in with the city's long-term plans for the community to certainly turn their face to the river instead of their back to the river. And that's what this project is gonna be. It's gonna be a place where you can sit and really enjoy the beauty of that valley walk quickly across the swinging bridge over to Glen Park and you know look down into the gorge and, and see what's going on in that community. Plus just have fun with family and friends. So we really envision again as a place where people and purpose, all kinds of activities can connect. It, it's amazing to me that uh, this, the description of this because it will help River Falls in so many different ways. Just about any way you look at it, the, the community will be enhanced by this project. That's, that's our hope, and yes. we appreciate all the great feedback we've gotten from people, um, all of our 100 plus friends on our Facebook page. I'm hoping by this conversation that we get 100 more or 200 more. Um, even that helps us. You don't understand how much in this day and age those social media accounts actually help us. So if you friend us on Facebook, you help us raise money because we need to show those funders that we have community support. And so that's another thing that you can do is become our friend. We need friends of Foster. You know, okay. that's what Bruce always said. It was great to have friends of Foster and they celebrated his life and his legacy and that's a great way for you to get involved. Well, thanks so much for oh, coming in today and talking about this wonderful, wonderful project. I appreciate you asking the questions you did and I hope uh, folks will contact us and, and share their enthusiasm. You've been watching 20 Questions today. We've been talking with Judy Foster Babcock about a wonderful new program that uh, the Foster Foundation is trying to develop in River Falls for a gathering place right on the Kinney. Thanks for watching.